guys, Married at First Sight, Season 10, Episode 6, Last Day of the Honeymoon in Panama. Um, girl. <sighs> well, starting out, I really was enjoying the couples. I was like, oh, this is nice, cute, romantic. This is the last night, last day. They're trying to spend time together. And I really, really like Mika and Mike getting to know each other and just kind of starting over. And then we get to the end and... um. Hmm. All right, let me just go through. Let me just go through the review and then we'll talk about it when we get there, okay? And I might drop a little spoiler at the end, okay? So it's day five of the marriage, final last days in Panama. Katie thinks Derek is the male version of her, okay? I mean, I don't know if I feel about marrying the female ver male version of me. I do have a male version of me, by the way. He is my brother, not my biological brother. We were just born in October, and I'm like, we're like, you're the female version of me. You're the male version of me. Derek is attracted to her on all fronts. So that's that's very important, okay? Because this is a problem we see with Zach and Mendy where he is not attracted to her. Attraction is not only physical, it's liking to be around the person and wanting to be around the person and stuff like that. And liking how different things about the person. For example, I love uh, the way my husband talk. Uh, I love his brain. I love how he thinks. He's extremely smart. And so I find those things attraction so i thought it was very cute that Derry said he's attracted to her on all fronts not just physical a lot of people think that attraction is physical but it's not only physical there are other areas uh that you need to be attracted to the person too okay taylor and the brandon looks cute and looks good together i really like them together waking up i like when they're spending time together i like when they're being lovey-dovey I just think they, they seem and look comfortable around each other, and I really love them getting up together. They feel like and look like a real married couple. They're always touching each other. They kind of remind me of me and my husband, you know, just always touching each other, holding each other's hands, um, you know, stuff like that. I, I really like that. I am a hopeless romantic, just in case you haven't figured that out, which is why I really, really love this show, and I really want to see people who really want to get married match, not the show matching people for drama and that's basically what it has uh come to now matching people for drama i've watched in season one i slept through maybe one or two seasons because just like this season i was able to tell from the beginning who's gonna make it and who's not gonna make it okay but i've been watching since season one and it's just now it's just it's just from for drama by the way welcome back to church girls want to get married too my name is janice please be sure to subscribe if you have not be sure to thumb uh, up this video for me. Share it out if you have a community tab or share it on all of your social media network. Let's get a few more people in the room and uh, let's get a more a few more people to just to subscribe to Church Girl. Of course, I reviewed this show, Married at First Sight. I also review Ready to Love. I love that show. I absolutely love that show. I think every one single woman should watch that show. And then I also have my books, uh, The Naked Wife. And my last book, I just, this just fell off the table. Uh, 23 Tasks of Guys You Might Meet on Social Media. This book is very, very good to figure guys out when you meet them, not to waste time with them, uh, ladies. So sh be sure to check that out on on um, my blog, Janice Hilton blog at uh, JaniceHiltonBlog.com or on uh, Amazon. Just uh, Google Amazon, my name, Janice Hilton. Thomas, but Janice Hilton, my books will come out. The Naked Wife, 23 Tasks of Guys You Might Meet on Social Media or In Christ I Am. I am an author and... And um, I do write a lot. So I also have a lot more content than me reviewing the show. Also, um, be sure to check my blog out. And if you would like to send me, because somebody, a couple of people wanted to send me something and I didn't have my P.O. Box. There's P.O. Box 422 Belleville, uh, New Jersey 07109, but I'll link it below. And also, if you want to buy me coffee, someone bought me coffee for two weeks. Maria, hey, Maria. Somebody else, too. I just have to go in here and accept it. Uh, so it's the cash app dollar sign and my name, Janice, J-A-N-I-C-E-H-Y-L-T-O-N. I will greatly appreciate it and I will give you a shout out. I know I have a box uh, coming and I'm going to give that that uh, person a shout out, a big surprise for you guys. All right. So 
I forgot because, you know, I just jumped right in the show. Okay. So I really like Taylor and Brandon together when they're being lovey-dovey and they're communicating, they're talking, they're spending time together. I really like that. He, he claimed he is a very private person and having someone telling him when and where to go, you know, taping those shows, being hard on him. And I can understand that. But if you are a private person, it's probably not wise for you to get on this show because, Cameras are going to follow you all the time. Uh, we heard that throughout the 10 seasons in season one from um, uh, Vaughn and Monet that they, they film 12 hours per day. There's some scenes they have to do it over. You know, it's just not natural. And we're going to see that with Zach when Zach asks her a question, Mendy a question. She, of course, she's assuming he means for him to get a boob job. And that's not what he said. And he said, what are you doing? This is on my questionnaire. You know, it's like she's trying to make him look bad when it's a question he was given, I'm assuming, by the producers to ask. So I just thought it was funny that Brandon said he's a private person, but you're on a TV show. If you're private, keep your life private because coming on TV, we all going to be digging up dirt. We all want to know what's going on with you. So you can't be that private if you want to come on the show. Why did you do Married at First Sight if you're such a private person? I'm not drinking coffee today. I'm drinking oatmeal from Mendy. And I'll tell you why. In a few minutes, many need some oatmeal. Okay, from the Spanish, my Spanish brothers and sisters. Okay, Austin and Jess, uh, and she says she has no uh, complaints. Sex is great. That's good. It's very, very important. Uh, cute PJs. They both want a dog when the timing is right. So I'm making the assumption that maybe the show gave them PJs because um the first night Jess pj blue and with the white stripe and then we also see katie in them and then katie had on another similar pj so i'm assuming maybe it's pjs from the show i don't know zach and mendy he he wakes up he says hi mendy oh my god his morning voice i don't care what y'all say a lot of people is saying zach is not good looking because he's not attracted to mendy just come on with the bull crap Okay, he don't have to be attracted to her. Mendy's very unattractive with her nagging and being annoying and stuff. And I think as women, we need to understand, ladies, that not because we are attracted to a man means he's attracted to us. Not because we like him means he he is supposed to or he's going to go into like us. Zach is a very good looking man. And you know, if he was not good looking, I would say he's not. No, you might not think he's not good looking because he's not attracted to Mendy. And I don't think that's fair. There is no guarantee that the person is going to be attracted to you because, again, attraction is over a number of different things. Of course, physical attraction. A man, ladies, listen to me. A man have to be physically attracted to us. If you, if he's not, if you don't look good to him based on what he sees, if you're not what he wants, forget it. Oh, but I have a beautiful spirit. Mm -mm. He don't see the beautiful spirit first. He sees you first. So you need to understand that. And you, we ladies can save a whole lot of time if we realize that and just move on. Okay. So uh, he says, hi, Mandy. And I just, ooh, just a sexy voice. His voice is, I love a morning voice. I don't know. You know, some of y'all may have these feminine men out here. But if you have a man with some bass in his voice, ooh, and when he wakes up in the morning, he says, hi, baby. You want me to make you some coffee? Do you want me to run your shower? Woo, girl! Sex up! It just made me like, come on back in the bed. <laughs> um, he said this is the most sleep he has gotten, of course, because he gets up early in the morning uh, because he, you know, he works in the gym. Um, she claims she takes steaming hot showers. I don't know why she just brought up. Because, you know, I take steaming hot showers that I come out the shower and my skin is just hot. And he said he takes cold showers. Um, I like it both. I start out hot, you know, not boiling skin hot, okay? Just hot, hot, and then I might cool it down a little bit. Open your pores and then you close your pores. Do the same thing with your face, ladies. Open your pores with the hot water. Uh, close your pores with cold water. FYI, that's just a little health and beauty. Uh, advice there, which I'm sure you already know. Okay. Uh, so then she says, I'm going to get dressed. And he says, did you take a shower? That Mandy, honey. Mandy, Mandy, man. She, that's another thing. She don't shower. <laughs> she don't take showers. Okay. 
She didn't say she took a shower this morning. She said, I take hot showers. I have it right here. She takes steaming hot showers. He says, I take cold showers. Then she says, I'm going to get dressed. And he said, did you say you took a shower? Or maybe she did say that. I think maybe she did. I think she said she got up this morning to take a hot steaming shower. But why would you say that? If you, mm, girl, nasty. Take a shower, okay? Okay, you're on your honeymoon. You need to shower at least two or three times a day, okay? Because you all know what you're going to be doing on your honeymoon. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> they all got on the bus and uh, the baby talks come up. Zach looks extremely uncovered. Mendy's sitting here. He's sitting like this. If you see a man sitting like this and you're sitting here, he is not interested. He is closed off and you can tell he is just sitting. Um, he is just annoyed. Um, the, uh, Brandon and Taylor said they talk about it. They want to have at least one. I just love how they are when they're being loving and caring towards each other. Uh, Derek and Katie said they want to wait two years, which I was surprised because, you know, she's allergic to latex condoms and she want a baby right now. So for her to be waiting two years, lies, Derek, protect your investments. Derek, let's not have another show where somebody ends, is pregnant on the show and then y'all have to stay together because you're pregnant, not because you want to stay together. Hello, Shawnees and Jeffrey. Okay. Mika and Mike are still sleeping in separate rooms. Come on, y'all didn't work this out yet? I mean, two days, three days maybe, but okay. They're... um. They're on, the couples are on the boat. They all look cute. Um, Mendy. I ain't gonna say nothing. I'm not saying nothing. They all look cute in their bathing suits, okay? Brandon comments about Taylor uh, Instagram and her consistently posting, and it, it basically bothers her. So they're on the bone, the bone cat, cat, man or something like that. They did that last season. That was cute. Okay. And she asked the, one of the guys on the boat to take her, to take her picture. And, you know, she looked really cute. She has a nice body. Oh my God. I live, I will live for Taylor's body. Okay. I need to get my lazy behind back out there and start running again. And then I could get back to where I used to be. You know, girl, I put on my pants this morning. You know, those pants that fit like a glove. You just slide it up. Girl, why I slip? It, the zipper wouldn't move. I was like, oh no, honey. And those are those nice pants that you have to take to the cleaners to get them clean. And girl, why it couldn't butt up? I was like, no, no, no. Devil is a lie. I'm getting back out there, honey. I'm going to, I need to lose at least 10 pounds. Okay. I don't know somebody that could use them. Mm -hmm. So he, Brandon comments about her, always posts on Instagram. It bothers him. Come on, this. This is the age we live in, social media, okay? They all jumped in the water, but did y'all notice how the black people stayed real? They they didn't jump in. They went in. <laughs> all the white people, they jumped in. The black people, they was like, mm. Mm. <laughs> I busted out laughing, okay? I thought that was funny, okay? But I know somebody was, is going to be, uh, will find it offensive. Ugh. But I thought it was funny. So they all jumped in and uh, the water looks was so beautiful, so cute. Mike and me could stay in the city, spend time together to build a friendship. I really like that. I love their time together. I wish she hadn't walked around with that long pocketbook. Just, you know, get one of those little, you know, the little sling bag you kind of throw across your, your shoulders. But anyways, I thought it was cute that, and I liked their idea of spending time together. You know, them talking, getting to know each other, because it seemed as if they really didn't get to know each other before. Michael allegedly said what he said and Mika got offended. Uh, Mika, Mika looks really cute in her little outfit. She had on a cute little uh, black shirt, I think, and jeans with her her navel pierced. I'm not with the nav navel pierced, by the way. Uh, not for me. Uh, she looked really, 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 really cute. And she actually looked real smaller. I don't know. I, I, maybe it's the wedding gown. You know, the wedding gown is a little poofy. But I thought she looked uh, really cute. 
they were talking, Michael said he has a 206 a Honda CRV and it, since he graduated in high school, that only has 20,000 miles on it. I believe it because the car I bought from an older couple only had like 21,000 miles on it. And they had that car for years. This is before I married my husband. Okay, so I thought that was cute. Uh, they got ISIS. Mika tried, Mike tried something different. I'm all for trying something different one time if you don't like it. You know, she is sticking with, with what she knows. And of course, Mike didn't like what he tried. I, w I said, ha, ha, ha. Brandon commented about Zach. When they were even in the water, Zach was swimming around the boat. And Brandon said, <laughs> his swimming is here was perfect. And not one strand was out of place. Uh, and she's, he said, oh, he's going to look perfect for TV. Brandon, how petty. So I guess Zach didn't get his hair wet, you know, because he had to be perfect. I thought that was funny too. Mike feels hopeful and optimistic. Me too. They were spending a lot of time together. They had a beautiful view where they were looking over the water. I thought that was a beautiful view. She said some of the issues with Mike, uh, but most of it was her. Thank you on her own BS and she needs to get over it. Thank you, Mika. Thank you. Thank you, girl. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Because my thing is, this is what I learned in marriage counseling and even in your life. Okay, once a person acknowledges that they did wrong and and apologize, it's time for you to move on. Okay, either you're going to restore the friendship, and I, I do believe some friendships are not worth restoring. I don't believe forgiveness means um, always, we're going to always get back to where we're going to be because some, something is just, mm -mm. like if you steal money from me, no, ma'am, no. No, you will never watch my pocketbook again. So I'm thankful that she said some of it is her getting over her, her own BS. So I like that. Thank you, Mika, girl. I'm starting to like you. Not that I didn't like you, but, you know, some of that stuff, I'm like, girl, no, come on. Okay, Mika didn't travel as much when she was young. Of course not. You was busy watching your three other brothers and sisters, all the babies your mama was popping out that she couldn't provide for, that she had to work two or three jobs so I leave you to be the child parent to take care of all the kids she was popping out to take care of. So of course she couldn't travel anywhere. <laughs> and she wants to do that with her kids. Mike has been to 40 states out of 50. Congratulations, Mike. Uh, did, um, did she say she had fun hanging out with Mike in Panama? Girl, you know she from the hood, y'all. She don't, she, she said, I have fun hanging out with Mike in Panama. This is not hanging down at the new restaurant, boo-boo. You're on honeymoon. You are on vacation. You're in a whole nother country. She said, I have fun hanging out. What? Okay, Mika. The guys separate and talk about who has sex. Zach says, man, we're not even close. I don't think they're ever going to get close. Okay. He ain't even trying nothing. He's like, I'm trying it. I'm not. And I can respect Zach. A lot of other men, like like Luke, is not attractive, but you still want to get the kitty. Okay, ladies? Don't think because you give him the kitty he's going to be attracted to you. He's not attracted to you. He don't want to marry you. He don't want to be with you. He just want the kitty, the kitty cat. Okay. Watch my 20 rules for 2020. Take the cookie off the table. Don't dish it out. Don't give it to nobody. Then that will save you half of your problems. Okay. Uh, Brandon said he's close. He said, man, I'm close. Look at that. Three. He remember last week he said three days. He's never had to wait three days to get the cookie. That's a shame. Austin does a kiss and tell, but we all know they done did it. Derek and Katie are very happy. Zach is, uh, Zach is, say he's very mature and he's never been in a place where he has not, he has to search for attraction. He said, Mandy is very mature. You mean old. <laughs> he's 32. Why are they matching with a 34 year old woman? And Mindy looks older for her age. I don't know what it is. Because I'm 42 years old. 
Okay, and I get it all the time that I don't look 42. And I tell people I'm 42, they can't believe it. But Mindy actually looks older for her age. And you all know that guys don't like, most guys don't like older women. They like younger girls. So Zach should have been matched with a girl like Taylor, who is very, you know, you know, like Taylor, 27, 28 Taylor, not Katie or not Mika, a girl like Taylor. Okay, that's if he's into black girls. I don't know if he's probably not. Okay, so he said he has to search for attraction. So there you go. It's not only physical. There are other things that you can be attracted to. But he said he has to show he ain't going to find it. It's not there. It's just not there. Brandon said, it sounded as, as if in Brandon's voice, I thought it was hysterical when he said, sound as if uh, Zach is not attracted to Mandy. And if I had a significant other that I was not attracted to, I would not have a significant other. So in, in other words, Brandon was like, uh-uh, if I'm not attracted to you, you're out. See, told you. I like that, Brandon. Thank you. He said, if I... I had a significant other that I was not attracted to. There would not be a significant other. In other words, he would be, boof, be going by. They have to like what they see. A lot of people keep comparing Jamie and Doug. I don't think they, Jamie liked Doug. I don't think she, she, I, just watch how she talks to him and how she treats him. That is not, not somebody who loved their husband and respect him and honor him and all of this, this, but that's why I can't watch her. Well, another reason, but it's different. Attraction is different for men than it is for women. Women, uh, you don't, most women don't necessarily have to 100% be physically attracted to the man, right? As long as he do right, take care of you and the money's piping him in, baby, you like Santa Claus. To most women, me, I have to be attracted to the man. I have to like stuff about you. Men is different, okay? Men have to be attracted to you. If you're not, if they're not attracted to you, forget it, pack your bags and go home, bye. That's just, that's just the way they make up. Read the Bible. When God brought Eve to Adam, what did Eve say? What did Adam say? Whoa, man. Whoa, he said, whoa. He was like, whoa. Wiped the sleep from his eyes. And he said, oh, wow. Zach didn't do that to Mandy Child. He was like, he looked, he looked like Brandon looked when Taylor came down the aisle. Taylor called Brandon. Taylor's talking with the girls are talking. He calls Brandon her little princess. No, you know that's a shame. You calling the man a little princess? He is really emotional. Mm -mm. No, no, no. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. That means Brandon's real feminine. He's very feminine. He acts feminine. He acts like a woman. I mean, come on. You're a man, but you're being described as a princess, and you're very emotional. Katie says Brandon seems more high maintenance than Taylor. I mean, come on. And see, Taylor now is getting in that mood where she's fixing him, just like uh, Stephanie and uh, AJ, where she's fixing him and she's trying to calm him down and making excuses for him and all this bullcrap. Oh my God, Mendy is jealous about Brandon and Taylor time in the hot tub. She continues to compare herself with the other couples instead of trying to build a connection with Zach, even though there ain't going to be no connection, child. You heard the rumor, right? The rumor is uh, Zach and Mandy didn't move in together when they came back to the to the honeymoon from the honeymoon. Okay. Hmm? Uh, did it look to you all that Derek was getting man boobs? Just look when he was getting on the boat. I don't know, child. You know, I noticed all kind of different things. Katie took Derek to the Panama Canal. I thought that was cute. He's in engineering. Um, Derek pledged to taste a piece of food from every country. He goes, so I would assume, so hello, what you gonna eat, okay? They want their next date, uh, coming to be cooking because they don't really cook or he cooks, but he changes his recipe, which we all do. Zach brought up, uh, Zach, aka Katie Dog, um, uh, she asked him, do you want to sleep with the dog in the bed? I was like, please say no. But I think he says, yes, he's okay with the dog in the bed. His roommate has a dog and the dog sleeps in the bed. And he's okay with the dog sleeps in the bed. So I don't know, child. I feel as if he's saying what he needs to say to make her feel, you know, okay with the dog. I, I don't know why. I, 
I feel that. I felt that when they brought up the dog. I just feel that. So we'll see what happened. Derek says she he has a crush on on Katie, and that have, hasn't happened in the, in the last three years. Even though he said he's never been in love. So you had a crush on somebody, but you didn't love him. I don't know what that means, girl. If you know, let me figure. Let me know. Austin just went to touring. What well, looks like it looks like a little city. I thought it was cute. Yeah, it's called the cathedral. Just asked about his religious views when he was growing up in the church. He did go to church, but he's not practicing. Jess is the same thing when they was coming up in the church, but he's she's more of an Easter and Christmas. Those are what those are the people. You know, you get to you're a regular member. You get to church on Sunday. You can't get no seat because the guest is here. They only come twice a year, and then you have to sit. The regular members have to sit in the overflow because you know these are your guests. So you got to be nice and give up your seat for the guests who only come twice a year. Mm. Twice a year, Christians we call. The last night in Panama, Brandon uh, got sunburned. Oh, that was a lot of sunburn. He didn't put on oh, no um. No, suntan before, is that what it's called? No, no thingy before he went out. Like, boy, don't you know? You're supposed to put some, okay. Uh, Taylor's gonna rub aloes on him. Told you. Mm -hmm. Um, But I, I absolutely love them together so far. When they're getting along, they're talking, being there, being lovey, dovey, I absolutely love them. Taylor appreciates Brandon and he is so much nicer. She compares him with her other ex that, you know, they've only known each other for a short period of time. Her last ex, she wasted a lot of time uh, spent with him, and it was just a waste of time. This is what I'm talking about. This is why you need my book. 23 times a guy you might meet on social media. Get the data before you commit. A lot of us, we get jump in and commit, and then you try to figure him out, and then you try to jump out. No, 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 no. Get the data about the man before you jump in the relationship and then decide based on the documents and the verification you have, the data you have if you want to have a relationship with him or move on. Date for marriage, church girls. This is what I tell you. Date for marriage. You don't got no time to waste, especially when you're in your 30s and 40s and 50s. Girl, who have two or three years to be wasting on some man? You know, that gets my blood boiling. So she wasted a lot of time. Taylor wants to take a picture of her drink, and then Brandon brings up the, the whole Instagram follow. She has an Instagram following. She He don't date Instagram follow people. Brandon brought up Taylor's uh, huge following, and he don't date females. I hate that word, when men, especially when a black man uses it. I just hate it, okay? Um, he usually don't date females with a large following because they're fake. They're not real people. And... You know, he said, he stay, I tend to stay away from females who have huge following because they're not real and he's not into women who wants to post everything. I can understand you don't have to post everything. Taylor, large following is going to take an adjustment, he says. People who have huge following are stuck up and pretentious, but he says he doesn't get that from Taylor, okay? He doesn't get that she's stuck up and pretentious. She says... In her voice over jealousy has been an issue in the past, and I thought so too. I thought he's going to be jealous of her and her huge following. But if that doesn't, if that doesn't, if if that, that's going to hurt the marriage if he can't adjust to, to her. It's sort of like accepting a person for who they are in that, um, Wait a minute, I got an email. Um, child, we've been having issues at the job. The lights went out, the fire alarm. We had to run out the building. Ah! Ah! <laughs> so we're actually running on a, a, a what is it, a generator? Okay. Um. So I think he's gonna have to. Brad is just gonna have to get comfortable, which we already know he's not gonna get comfortable because there was a magazine that come out that I will tell you what the rumor report is. He's basically jealous of her her huge following. Um, and that she's posting everything and people are commenting on her and stuff like that. I I don't know. You just have to. I don't know. I just think he's not. He got some problems. Okay. 
Katie and Derek went to dinner too. Spending, to, she said, spending twenty four seven together is a lot. You wanted to get married at first sight. What you thought was going to happen, Katie? <sighs> She's nervous about moving in. She took a shower after the day trip, and Derek jumped in, and she was like, "I really would have appreciated those few minutes by myself." How are you on your honeymoon? And y'all, this you saying this is the male version of you. This is the male version of you. Don't you want to spend time with the male version of you on your honeymoon? No, I understand when you come home and you kind of getting used to each other. When I was on my honeymoon, child, if my husband was going to the bathroom, I'm like, where you going? Okay, I'm coming with you. And we would do the same. We would take showers together on our honeymoon, okay? At the house, my bathroom is too little. I hate it, okay? And I told my husband, in my dream house, I need me a big bathroom with a big shower, walk-in shower. So I think Katie and Derek, I think is, might not be what it's supposed to be. And he's, she's gonna, he's gonna be getting on her nerves because he's the type of guy who, who likes to be up under his woman. He seemed like the type of guy that likes to be up under his woman all the time. And she's like, oh, I just need some space. And it's understandable, okay? One of the things I love about my husband is that he travels. Yes, he's on somebody's plane at least once a month. And I love that. I love the time apart. And I love being home. You know how some women have to go hang out with girlfriends? Not me. Leave me alone, child. Leave, take the baby, go. Bye! Don't come back till tonight. I just love being alone. I love being home alone. And maybe because I'm a writer, I love the peace, the quietness. I get up at 4, 4.30 every morning. Most morning, because I couldn't get up this morning, girl. Most mornings, take me a hot shower, come down, make the coffee, and I pray and spend time. I talk to you guys. I read my Bible. I pray and stuff like that. I love my quiet time but when hubby's home i love being around with him and spending time with him so i think this is going to be um a problem for them uh mika and mike spending time and mike asks if uh her if she's starting to like her oh i was like don't ask her that because she's gonna say something else don't ask her that i was nervous i was like no don't don't ask her do not ask her that so he said, you starting to like me. And I, I can I can imagine that, you know, you're married. You want your mate to like you. And I love their time together, them on the balcony. I thought they looked good together when they hugged. He kissed her on the cheek. I thought that was just so romantic. It reminds me of my husband because he kissed me on my front of my cheek sometimes. And I just absolutely love it. But I was very, very nervous when she, when he asked, do you like me now? Do you like me now? Are you liking me now? <laughs> I remember like the man from Verizon. Okay. Um, so I really like um, that. So he, she said whatever she said. I was like, just yes or no. You like her? You like him? Uh, Mika asks if he's nervous about moving in together. I think I read something too. I don't remember. Come back for the spoiler. And I, I just love their time on the balcony. I could have I could have used another five or ten minutes of Mike and Mika on the balcony just talking and bonding versus Zach and Mindy with the, her with the going on and on. She gets on my nerves, okay? Mika has some house et etiquettes. He needs to clean up after himself. I understand that. However, you are married, so if he happens to leave his table, his um, his plate on, like sometimes when my husband comes home late and we're in bed, you know, he'll eat in the living room and sometimes he'll leave the plate or the wine glass. I don't mind. I don't get mad and yell and scream. I, I 
it's okay for me. It's okay for me. It would drive some people crazy, but because he don't do it a lot, and most times we eat around the table, so if he comes home late and he's just sitting there in front of the TV watching TV and come up and, I, you know, it, it doesn't bother me. I know it bothers some people. It doesn't bother me. The toilet seat bothers me, though, and I'm going to tell you guys how I got him to close the toilet seat in two weeks after we got married and we moved in together, okay? Uh-uh, you will not be leaving the toilet seats up, okay? So number one is clean up after himself. I can see that. But at the same time, her room looks a mess. Did y'all see Mika's room? Okay. Number two, most of the bed belongs to her. He can have his corner. I agree with that. But, you know, if you have a king, this is why couples get a king-size bed. So nobody won't have to scream and talk about, I'm not, I don't have enough space. Uh, she doesn't like people in on their phones. So I could see that if we're talking, you shouldn't be on your phone. And number four, if he wakes up before her, do not under no circumstances wake her up or turn the light on. She says it's easy to get dressed in the dark. Why, why can't you have a lamp? When I wake up in the night, in the mornings, I don't turn the big light on. I just turn the lamp on and my side of the bed do what I need to, to do. Okay. She's being real controlled. I don't like that, but you know, okay. In, um... In, in Mike's voiceover, he said he thinks she's high maintenance, uh, and I thought the time on the balcony was so, so cute. I really, did you guys enjoy that time? I just really, really like them talking and getting to know each other. What do you guys think? Back to Zach and Mandy. These two just drive me up the walls, especially that Mandy. And again, they're, they're eating dinner, and here she goes, drilling him about their time together she can't just let it flow if you notice if you notice go back and watch this scenes which i'm sure you're not going to go back but it's always her it's always her initiating the conversation so so did you like your time with me today so you like me you're trying to, it's just so annoying and instead of them just sitting down and just having a nice meal and letting the conversation flow she's drilling him she's going giving him the 10th degree and last week he said i have not talked this much in all of my life that means in all of his 32 years of living mendy he has not talked as much he has spoken in the last three days that's a shame send a shame before god okay leave that man alone okay so she's drilling him blah 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 she noticed that he wasn't wearing her ring and everyone else is wearing their ring here she go compare them again it really hurts her feeling he can't make excuses he generally forgets to wear jewelry give him time to get used to it unless they keep it on all the time like my husband he doesn't take his off um we my husband had lost his ring we think he lost it in the diaper pail <laughs> He went to the garbage. He was searching through the baby diaper pail. Yuck! So we um we were the insurance paid for to replace it, and he got a, a simpler version of the ring because he said his frat brothers was laughing at, after him, saying his ring looks like a female ring because you know his ring is a lot like my ring with diamonds all the way around. So this time he got a simpler, very just a very simple ring, and uh, so he doesn't take it off. I take mine off. Especially when I'm wearing my engagement ring. So I'm not going to fault Zach for not wearing his ring. Maybe he did forget it. You know, it's going to take time for him to get used to it. And remember, he works as a, he's works in a gym. So, you know, you don't really wear jewelry in the ring. But okay, I'm not making excuses for him. I'm just saying, I'm just not going to go get hard on him about not wearing the ring. Okay. Oh my God, it is powerful what Zach says here. He says, as they're talking, and a lot of people say he talks in circles. No, he don't. He's just not saying what you want to hear. All you have to do is listen to what he is saying. And I really believe a lot of things he's saying, he don't want to hurt Mendy's feelings, okay? So this is what he says. I wrote it down for y'all since y'all say he talking in circles. He says, as much as they hang out, it feels like it would be easier when they go back to D.C. And when he's not around her, he's asking himself, will I miss her? Am I thinking about her? He has never been in this situation before. He doesn't know what to do or what the answer is. What's so hard about what he say? Basically, let me translate ABC123. He's saying basically... 
am I going to miss her when I go to D.C. and we're not together? When I go to work and she go to work, am I going to miss her? Basically, no, he's not going to miss her because there's no attraction. He is searching. He said he don't know what the answer is. He don't know what to do. Hey, ain't nothing to do. You just have to try. She's not the type of girl. She is not the type of girl for him. Okay? She blurts out. So remember, remember the comment we made, they made that said, and I did it here too, that he asked her to have a breast implant. Lies, child. That is what she assumed that my husband always said. Don't make assumption because you will make an ASS out of you and me. So you do not make assumption. She blurts out, what do you want me to do? Get breast implants? And he says, whoa, whoa, whoa. What are you doing? It's part of my questionnaire, a.k.a. It's a question the producers gave him. So apparently, it's a question the, the producers gave him. And in her voiceover, Mendy, he, he's been trying. She said he's been... She says she's been trying to give this ch guy a chance. A chance for what? He don't like you. He ain't attracted to you, girl. It's a blank, blank, blank. The guy, he's a blank, 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 blank. So basically, it seems as if the question that the producers gave him, this is what I'm reading it, because he said, this is a part of my questionnaire. What are you doing? So she's trying to make him look bad. I don't trust that, Mindy. I don't trust that, Mindy. I don't think Zach said, I am not attracted to you. She reads it and assumes that's what he said. He's saying, I'm not growing in attraction. She read it as I'm not attracted. But he did not say, I'm not attracted to you. Neither did he say, have a breast implant. She assumed because he says he's not going to miss you. He's asking himself, is he going to miss you? Then she reads that, get a breast implant? Well, how did you come up with that? The girl need counseling. She needs to deal with her issues. She has a lot of internal issues, a lot of baggage, and a lot of healing to do. Mandy should not have been matched, okay? Back to Austin and Jess has a romantic dinner. I love that. They remind me of me and my hubby in this scene. She says it feels like she's been dating her husband, and they don't know how to use a knife and fork. Oh, my God, did y'all see that? That is like a big pet TV for me. If I went out with a guy that didn't know how to use a knife and fork, that was it. I would dump him. That was it. How do you not know how to use a knife and fork? How do you not know how to use a knife and fork? My daughter knows how to use a knife and fork. I was like, oh, my God, they don't know to both of them. Okay, maybe just me. Uh, Mike and me. Mike asked me if he would, she would feel comfortable uh, with her coming, him come back to the room. I thought that was cute. Now she has all this stuff all over the floor, uh, but talking about you know clean up after yourself, and she wants him to see they can sleep in the bed all the way over there in the corner, but with a robe. What's the purpose of the robe? She don't want to feel his dingling on her back or something, or is it because of the cameras? Somebody said maybe because of the cameras. Like who sleeps in a robe? That's too hot. It's Okay, I don't understand it. Uh, Zach is in the hallway talking and he doesn't know what to do. It shouldn't be this hard. He feels nothing. It shouldn't be. It's it, it it shouldn't be. He's just not attracted to her. And not only physical, again, it's more than physical. She's annoying. She nags him to death, okay? So, um, I don't know what they're going to do. Mindy calls Dr. Vivian and blah, blah, blah. Dr. Vivian said maybe it's cold feet. No. He's just not attracted to her. Mandy says he's not attracted. Is he's not attracted? Doctor Vivian said that's it's the him him not attracting to her is guiding his decision making. But again, attraction is not only physical. Okay, to me, attraction is not only physical, and that they don't match people based on attraction. Of course not. But you want to give them something they want. You know, you don't want to want a guy that have girl wants a tall man and you give him some of that's five feet. Okay, that wouldn't work. But hello, men need to be attracted to women. Dr. Vivian, last few hours of the honeymoon before heading back home. Both Zach and Katie hates to fold clothes. Okay, we already know what their house is going to look like. <laughs> Jess and Austin had breakfast and she asked what is his favorite part of the honeymoon. And he's saying getting to know her. I thought that was cute. I love, love it, love it, love it, love it, love it. Austin is messy and she's neat. She, so she's going to be doing a lot of the cleaning up. Okay, she has to stop dating guys because because of red flags. Hello, this is why, that's why red flags are for, Jess. But you're in a marriage, you can't run. 
Zach and Manny has breakfast, and here she goes again, quizzing him. I just can't take it. He's looking forward to getting back to real life, back to his routine, and back to home, okay? This was a vacation, but it was like a vacation from hell, stuck with somebody who's just nagging and annoying you, and you're not attracted to them. Manny asks if they make a mistake, and he says they both had a picture of what it would be. There you go again. Men have a picture in their head. Hello, my husband, Wong, Condoleezza Rice, Michelle Obama, um... Janet Jackson, Mary Poppins, hello, me, Janice Hilton. Uh, her honeymoon was disappointing because, listen, her husband didn't hold her hand like the other couples. He didn't kiss her like the other couples and told her he wasn't attracted to her, and that's not a honeymoon. Okay, couples heading back home. Oh my God, Brandon has tension with the producers. Uh, they're waiting for food, and you can hear him talking to the producer, Brandy. Where's the food? And he's like, "You're trying to play me." He's like, "No, I'm trying to play you." And he said that we're supposed to do. What are we supposed to do while while we eat, while we wait? And the producers like, "Y'all need to be talking to each other." I didn't like the producers' attitude. I thought she was extremely aggressive and manly and masculine, and I did not like that. Um, I thought he asked for ten minutes. I thought they should give him a few minutes because you know these are these are people who are not used to being in front of the cameras or might not want to be in front of the cameras. Sure, they signed up for the show, but I just think that. Out of courtesy, just give him five minutes. He asked for ten minutes, and he the the camera. He's pushing the camera guy. Don't touch nobody, girl, because that boy because of, you know lawsuit and stuff. Uh, then he's he's like, well, I'm here to do my job. I don't like that. I don't like that. Five minutes, ten minutes would not hurt. Okay, Taylor, and listen to Taylor, aka Stephanie. How about you allow him to go get a drink and come back? They said no. Why or some water? Why he couldn't go get a drink and water to kind of calm down and gather himself? I don't like this producer. I don't like her, Brandy or whatever her name is. Very masculine and manly. Okay, not being very ladylike, not being kind-hearted, not being courtesy, Curtis. Okay, I don't like it. You should have given him. Anybody could find fine. Even us, when you go to work, sometimes, you know, we work with customers every day. Sometimes. You just need five minutes, you know? Yesterday I was at work, I told my supervisor, I was like, listen, I need to go outside and get some fresh air for 10 minutes. And I felt so much better after I went outside for 10 minutes. Sometimes we'll just get up, walk, and just be like, go to the supervisor. Um, Listen, you are gonna have to deal with that customer, I can't. And they understand, so my thing is, why not give him the five minutes he need, okay? Taylor says uh, she told him he doesn't want to be married to the brand and that acts like that. So Taylor's saying he was mean and disrespectful to the producers. But my thing is, you know, they could have given him a few minutes. So then now it's like he say, she say. Uh, so that me he reads that as me. He takes his ring off. He threw it at her. He don't want to be married no more. He walks to the van. He's cussing these mother effers, and I can't wait to get to back to D.C. And F you, Taylor. I don't like that. I don't like it. Oh, don't like it, Brandon. That's not being a gentleman. That's unbecoming. But again, Chahi had no daddy to teach him how to be a man. So, all right, y'all. That's basically the review. I'm just. I. They need to do something about the show. I don't know if I'm going to be watching next season, but we'll see. Because, you know, I think we need to, I'm going to do a video on this. We need to reset our mind. The Bible talks about renewing our minds, okay? This show is no longer about matching people who have core values. What the hell is, excuse my language, y'all know, I'm not a custom woman. Tell me what Zach and Mindy have in common. Nothing! Absolutely nothing. Nothing, nothing, nothing. Okay, by the way, Mindy, girl, I'm in Jersey, you in D.C., four hours, come on down to Jersey, girl, I'll cook you some Jamaican food, I'm making some porridge, some banana porridge, some oatmeal porridge, cow meal porridge, I don't like the cornmeal porridge, my kids don't either, but girl, make you some banana porridge, make you some goat head soup, some red peas, some beef soup, fatten you up a little bit, i make you some food, some yam and dasheen and dumpling and chocho and uh, Aki and saltfish and mackerel and curry chicken, 
girl, jerk chicken girl, jerk chicken girl, Mandy, you'll need to come on down to Jersey girl. Mm, that's all I'm going to say. I ain't saying nothing about Mandy. I'm just saying, girl, come on down here and make you some food, okay? All right, beloves. I love you. This was long today, 50 minutes. Oh, no, that is too long. But I love y'all for watching. Subscribe, share this out. Thumbs this up. Bye. Love you, love you, love you. Don't forget my book. Don't forget my book. Love y'all. Bye.